Should giving up be an option? Pleasure to see so many new faces, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Azam. I'm 70 years old. I've been around here in the city for approximately four to five years, living with my family that consists of my stepmom, my dad, my little sister, bigger sister, and her husband. Loving, living in such a peaceful life in a country like Sweden. I'm one of the innocent kids that were forced to leave their country on an early age. August 13th, 2012. At that day, I had my last football match with my friends, and then they did me a little party, a fantastic little budget party that I will never ever forget. They bring some snacks, and I remember that they made me to have my fingerprint on the wall so that they will not forget me. But well, at that night, after I came out, I came, I came out. I mean, I came back from <laughs> when I came back from the party. I went home, and then I saw my mom crying. Um, I don't know what to do. I was really shocked and nothing came out of my mouth. So she told me, after a minute of silence, she told me, Azam, I love you my son. Make me proud now. It is just a small joyful trip to Sweden. I will see you soon, just make me proud. And I'll never forget me. Well, next day, next day, a stranger came and took me with my little sister and the only picture I remember in my face in my face, the only picture I remember in my head is seeing my, my mom, my grandparents and one of our close friends waving at us while mom was bursting into tears. So, 10 days of tragedy later, we arrived at Turkey where we got to stay in some stranger's house they probably knew my dad. Well, during that period of time, I would say it was one of the worst periods of time in my life. They treated us really bad mentally and physically. We stayed there for a whole year till we got our residence so we could fly to Sweden. And then when we arrived in Sweden, our freedom was unlimited. It felt really amazing to finally feel secure for the first time since a really long time. Not gonna lie though, the first two months went really awful in Sweden since it was new traditions, new ideologies, everything was new for us. So it's like, yeah, everything was absolutely everything was new for us. So uh, it was a bit uncomfortable, but then the first period of time went actually really good. Uh, I started to play football again as I did back in Syria, and I got to know a lot of new friends and obviously when I'm on the football pitch I got to know a lot of new friends as well that I probably still have contact with till today. I actually just contacted one of them before doing my speech. He wished me some good luck. Um, anyway, so that was actually the peak of my life. But then the dance started. When I started my school, I got bullied for generally not knowing Swedish and being a bit overweight. I got also treated with racism in my football team. Then they kicked me out for some reason because I was generally not fitting or something. Uh, then here's a little story. So once in my old school, before the math class, that bully gang came up to me and one of them just started to hit me for some reason. And it was because I didn't do his uh, math homework because I was too busy doing mine. <sighs> some of them trash talked me, some of them humili humili humiliated me, and it is just the fact that you couldn't do anything about it, just shut up and like just look at them doing everything they do, feeling powerless, just reminded me of the days back in Turkey. It, that's the thing that made me really sad, and, like it just stays in the heart. But then later on, <laughs> I started to thrive with this environment. I know how to handle the situation. I know how to handle racism. I know how to handle sarcasm. I know how to handle 
bullying in the right way and it didn't last for too long, I would say. Everything got much better later on. I finished ninth grade with some pretty good grades, I would say, and then decided to choose one of the most special programs in Sweden, the Ivy program. Later on, the football was going way too good for me as well, but then the unwanted happened. When one day I couldn't take it anymore, so I decided to go to the emergency in one stop. Got to know that I have an incurable heart disease that would probably last forever with me, they said. Uh, I didn't believe that because with passions and will, I got rid of it after four months. <sighs> that was really unpredicted, they said. They were really shocked, but I know I can do it because I believe in myself. Next summer, I will be meeting my mom after six years full of tragedy. Uh, so, continuing with what I said. Uh, Tragedy is coming to an end, and I will be meeting with the loved ones again. After six years, they said it will be the last part, but I don't believe that. I know I will see them again. So despite all the things that had happened to me during these six years, I would like to thank my classmates for being my second family for for being for me there when I needed it. They supported me mentally and physically. They were really nice. I love all of them. They were really nice to me, and they still. Uh, I would like to thank my teachers for helping me to shape my personality and to make me realize who I am. Who I, who I am. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Who I really am, yeah. Who I really am. Yeah. Uh, life can be tough, depressing, outrageous sometimes, but sh you shouldn't give up. Life is about being passionate. It is how the individual acts in the bad days that defines their personality and their strength. In schools, we get lessons and then we get tested. But, but in life, it is you get tested and from the actions you did in the test, you get the lesson from it. There is no good days without bad days. I'm not here to make you sad or feel a bit sorry for me or like feel sad about me. I'm just here to inspire you into becoming the unbreakable per person that you can be and to become a real warrior. Thank you for listening.